After Kate Mahoney's miracle recovery was affirmed by the Pope, Mother Mary Ann was beatified. If one more miracle could be attributed to the intercession of now blessed Mary Ann Cope, she would be eligible for sainthood. Little did anyone know that as the beatification ceremony itself was taking place in Rome in May of 2005, a woman was deathly ill in a room at the Syracuse Hospital founded by Mother Mary Ann. That's about the last thing I remember. I passed out. Sharon Smith had a bad reaction to an anti-rejection drug she was on for a kidney transplant. She developed pancreatitis with severe complications. Tissue throughout her abdomen was being ravaged by infection. We do our best all the time. When Dr. Tom Serto operated, he found most of the upper part of her gastrointestinal tract an organ known as the duodenum had been destroyed. It had disappeared. It's a tubular structure and it essentially lost the front half uh, as if you sort of opened up a, a, a pipe and folded it in half. You're looking at the bottom half of the pipe, the top half is gone, almost like looking inside the ribs of a canoe. I'd never seen this before, number one, or frankly heard of it. And uh, so I thought her chances were survival were extremely limited at this point. Extremely limited? It was worse than that. He explained to me that I wasn't going to make it, that I had this this hole um, that he couldn't fix. And he said he couldn't close it, he couldn't repair it. There was no way. So he said, I don't know how long you have, but you don't have long. The next morning, Dr. Serto consulted with experts at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. They said they'd only seen this a couple of times in their history, and all those patients had died. I was in tears, and I said, well, you know, okay, I guess so. Thanks, you know, for what you did, and I don't know what else to say. I just kind of sat there quietly and thought about, you know, what was to come. What was to come, as it turns out, was something Sharon could never have dreamed. Providentially, at St. Joseph's Hospital, certain people, including one total stranger to this day, began to enter her life the night before doctors were going to remove her respirator. One of my really good friends was in the waiting room that evening before they were going to take that tube out in the morning. And some lady, I don't even know who she was, told my friend, take this this prayer and pray for your friend. This is Mother Mary Ann Cope's prayer, and it might help her. So my friend, Carol DePietro, uh, came in. Of course, I'm unconscious, but she prayed the prayer for me. And in the morning when they took my respirator out, I started breathing on my own. A stunning development, and yet her infection remained. Vital tissues were gone. The prognosis was still grim. On her 59th birthday in late July, Sharon was briefly allowed some fresh air outside St. Joe's, surrounded by family and friends who fully expected this birthday would be her last. Not long after this picture was taken, other people crossed Sharon's path in another twist of divine providence. Betsy Long, um, she gives communion in the hospital. And that evening, um, she happened to be in the hospital visiting a sister that was there, her and Sister Michaeline. And she had met me, you know, from giving me communion, and that's when she said to Sister Michaeline, I want you to see this girl, you know, I think maybe, you know, we should help her. This person in bed did not, number one, look alive. Sister Michaeline Cabral. There were tubes going in and out of every orifice in her body. So I asked the gal who was sitting by her bed, is anyone praying to Mother Marianne? Yes, those them? prayers were happening, but Sister Michaeline took another yes. step. She got a packet of soil like this one, soil from Mother Marianne's gravesite in Hawaii. She pinned the packet of soil to Sharon's hospital gown. I prayed for a miracle that Mother would intervene. I prayed at the time and said, Mother, uh, this person really needs your intervention. The prayers to Blessed Mary Ann continued through the summer and into the fall. For months, Sharon had been fed and drained by tubes, but now Dr. Serto noticed at first slow and then shockingly fast improvement. 
we took that drain out <clears throat> and in fact she closed that entire leak overnight what was left of the leak but it came in the next morning and she wasn't having any drainage out where the drain used to be so that was very surprising <laughs> surprising medically inexplicable or what well it was to me i mean i don't think any of us would have expected the you know three liters two liters three liters of fluid coming through this drain site to just stop overnight. And we did an upper GI series to see how this all looked and nothing was leaking out any holes anymore. It literally shut the fistula overnight. And actually more dramatic than that was, just given all the extensive damage that we'd seen in the operating room, when you looked at her x-rays, this area of her bowel looked pretty much like nothing had ever happened to it. Uh, so that was very surprising. So he says, I want you to order something to eat, anything you want. Now, mind you, I haven't eaten for nine months, truly. You know, I mean, what goes into went out, you know, it didn't go anywhere, you know. Um, what did you order? What did you have? You <laughs> ham and cheese on rye <laughs> with milk. <laughs> By January, after nine months in the hospital, Sharon was released into rehab. A month later, she was home in Chittenango. By summer of 2006, one year after she should have died, she was strong enough to travel and take a vacation in Canada. The record of Sharon's amazing recovery was sent to the top pancreatic surgeon in America for his review. He felt very strongly that there was no way that this patient should have survived, healed all this the way she did, and in, in his opinion as well, it was a miraculous recovery. What is your opinion, Dr. Sergio? Was it a miracle? I, it's not my business to decide what a miracle is or isn't. I have no other explanation for how she survived all of this. And uh, I don't have trouble believing it was a miracle because I can't explain it any other way. And Dr. Richard Hare, who also reviewed the case, recalls how Sharon's problems started. She was a kidney transplant. Well, I mean, a kidney, a transplanted kidney is a pretty fragile organ. I mean, how that survived is just, you know, beyond explanation to me. There was only one possible remaining explanation. I was convinced it was prayers, yes, to Mother Mary Ann and, and all the prayers that all the other people said, and all the prayers that the people said to Mother Mary Ann for me, yes. Yeah. The Vatican agreed. Sharon Smith's recovery is an inexplicable medical miracle, the second miracle attributed to the intercession of Mother Mary Ann Cope. Sharon will be in Rome for the canonization and present a relic of St. Mary Ann to the Pope. Her best friend, Pat Pilon, will be right there with her. This is God showing the world that a miracle in, in today's world still will happen if you believe. She was just chosen. And I don't know why, but I'm grateful. And you know Mary, Marianne has something to do with it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Have no doubt. I'm just shocked. I just never felt it would be me to have a miracle. But you believe it. I do believe it, you yes. no question it was prayer that healed me. Oh, I have no question at all. And that Mother Marianne's intercession somehow in heaven with God is responsible for you. Something, yes. Something Mother Mary Ann and God had to talk about to save me. We pray.